Hello, and welcome to this Creating Analytics in WKO series. This is Lesson 2, Chart Settings. Let's pick up where we left off on Lesson 1 and just reconfirm how to open the configuration box. There's a small down arrow at the right-hand side of any chart. You really can't see it here because it's tucked in there. If you click that, you get this small UI and user interface. And if you select Configure this chart, you will get the configuration box and it will open up for you. In that configuration box, you have the ability to adjust your settings. And let's break those settings down into chart settings and data series settings. First, let's take a look at your chart settings. All right, chart settings, this is the screen that you'll see. And what we basically have over here is the left-hand side is your data information and data series. And over here on the right-hand side is your chart settings, which we're gonna be talking about for the next couple of slides. Up top, you really have your chart information. So what's the title? What category does it belong? And this is more of a future feature we have to help people manage their libraries. Um, and then you can tag charts. If you want your charts searchable, or if you want to use them in specific reports using the has tag, not hashtag, has tag function, um, you want to tag these charts um, for search or grouping together in dashboards. So that is the information section. Next, we have the chart type section, which basically you only have two types, right? You can either build a chart, which will give you lines or bars or whatever you want, or you build a report. Um, and a report will simply just give you the facts, just the data coming out of that. The next, and here's where there's a little bit of a learning curve, right? And people get stuck on this is I'm gonna do data series and then I'm gonna do ranges, but this is how the chart will visually display based on some of your selection formats within WKO. So first let's talk about the data series. We have two options, zoom and overlap and zoom and separate. Zoom, so when you select a time range, zooms into the time range, meaning you will only see the time range you have selected. I'm gonna demo these in a slide coming up here in two or three. So it zooms in, that's why we called it zoom, and it's only gonna show you in a workout if I choose a 20 minute interval, it's going to, and the chart is set to zoom, it zooms in on that 20 minute interval. If I am looking at 90 days in my PMC, it zooms in on those 90 days. Now the trick here is notice it's both of these data series are zoomed, but are they overlapped or separated? So overlap means if you command or control click multiple ranges, overlap will overlap on the same X and Y series. Meaning if you had in that same workout, you selected one 20 minute and then, and it zoomed in, and then uh, you selected a second 20 minute on that. If you have that on overlap, your chart will simply overlap the two data series. Let's say you're tracking power, it would overlap power. Now on ranges, you have three choices. So in ranges, you have three choices. Oops, I skipped a the slide there. You have the same ability to um, zoom and overlap and zoom and separate. Hopefully, you know, you understand that's the same reality, but the difference with ranges, right? It will zoom in at the time range you select. So most of that behavior is familiar into your, or, or, or really there's no difference between zoom, having them both set between zoom and overlap. What'll start happening is when you begin to compare data, so you hold command or control, click down, and you pick multiple intervals or multiple time periods or multiple years, you might wanna just simply open charts and experiment with what happens when you adjust. Do you want the data series zoomed and separated, but yet the time range is zoomed and overlapped, or vice versa, or both the same? Really, that's just experimenting. But notice on range, you have an additional function called highlight. So zoom, zooms into the data range you selected. Highlight, so all you see in zoom is your selected range. Highlight, highlights the select data within a chart. So you see all the data with what you selected highlighted. Hence, we call it highlight. So you have two options for the way it will deal with time ranges. You can see them as a zoom view or highlighted within all the data. Here's a simple example, right? So I have a PMC chart here. This one is, oh, that's hilarious, but I'm gonna leave it in here as a learning lesson. I have them backwards, right? This is Zoom, this is Zoom. So you see this zoomed in per the 90 days selected, zoomed in for the 90 days selected. 
and this one is highlighted. So remember, my titles are backwards. It's not a presentation by me if there isn't at least one typo. Um, so it's backwards. So I'm looking at the same 90 days, right? Well, actually, I'm looking at the same time period, last 385 over here, 365. But you can see the data series I've selected is highlighted, and then here it's zoomed. So how you set up your charts and zoom and highlight can have a pretty big impact. Now let's talk about data series settings. So the data series, you begin to select data series over here on the left, you'll notice you have a different uh, UI, the UI will change, the settings become different. So first we have the visual effects of the data series. I didn't bother to say name, you're going to name your data series like, and I'm going to use this CTL as an example, whatever your data series, that's so unique, just name it, what, it could be power, it could be CTL, the basics, or you could call it Tim's super secret data metric, whatever it is. This area here in highlights is the data series manager, the visual output, right? So first I can select a chart type. So I want line, bars, area, um, gauge. There's all types of different chart types. Just select which one you need by clicking the up and down little arrow or just click on it. It'll open a little drop down box. Then assuming you're using some form of line and stuff like that, you can set, do you want your line solid or dashed or thin or thick or symbol size, do you want circles and squares and triangles in there, right, for style. And then you can select your color. You want your line CTL in, our, in WKO, the line is blue. So you control those data series. And remember, these controls only relate specifically to the data series you have selected and can be customized by every data series that you use. Color is an interesting one. I did this as a little sidebar because I get this question a lot. So I kind of just threw this in here. So sometimes you see like cool shading and, and unique colors and things done in some charts. And then somebody goes and tries to do the same thing. And they're like, I can't figure out how to do that. Well, the reality is that's one of the differences in PC and Mac. Mac just has better operations for color controls and stuff like that. So on a Mac, if you select color, there's actually a dub in the palettes. This is your palette selection. You can find a WKO5 palette. So since we can supply a palette of all the pre-existing colors, you will find that you have more color options. And of course, Mac gives you the ability for to just simply set opacity. PC doing that is way, way harder and most people don't know how and it takes a lot of time. So sometimes when you see all the shading and fade colors and this and that, that's because the person's building it in Mac and you might be on a PC. Sorry, PC users, it is one area where Mac is better. All right, back to data series. The bottom half of the data series, now notice I skipped expressions. That's obviously what all the other lessons are gonna be. Right now I'm just talking about the settings. So we have the X and Y or Y and X, the way they're stacked. Your Y axis is your vertical, your X is your horizontal. There's plenty of options to set those. If you just enter an expression, it will often auto select for you. It is smart enough to know. If it doesn't know, it'll leave it blank and you can fill in whatever you want. We have rounding, and this is just the way you wanna show your numbers. What type of uh, you know drill down do you want um, in rounding? Um, I'd be careful not to go too specific. I rarely ever go to 1.0 or 0.1. Um, going beyond that typically isn't needed. And then finally, there's annotation. Um, annotation is if you want to put a chart data output somewhere in the chart. I'm going to demo that here in the next slide along with include in legend. If you have it checked, the chart will have whatever this data series is, CTO in this case, in the legend. If it was unchecked, it would not have it in the legend. So let's look at a demo of that. So basically, here is legend versus annotation. So I created a simple chart. Yellow is power. I used red so you can see it is average power. Now, average power is a single number, right? It's the average power of this workout. So the reality is the average power of this workout is 204 watts. Okay, but if I have it in the legend, if I'm scrolling here, right, or here, or here, or here, it's always going to say 204 watts. So I, do I really want it up here? Maybe, maybe not. So you could check or uncheck to have it in the legend. Or you can annotate it back from this chart setting. Simply drop this down and you'll get a whole bunch of annotation options like top, bottom, below, above, right, left. And I've selected for this one above 
meaning it's going to stay above, just above the line to the right. And then it outputs the data with the line. My personal habit, I don't like to junk up the legend with too much stuff. I just want to, um, I just want to, you know, create the data. I want to keep my, the data that changes, I want to be in my legend. I use annotation to clean up all the non-changeable data. Excellent. Please join us for the next lesson three, building your first chart. Thank you.